it clean. My man engraving always keep it 100, man. Team keep it clean. What's up, team keep it clean? What's up, team keep it clean? Hey, engraving, he got Hey, 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 hey. Team keep it clean. Going on, team yeah. keep it clean. YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's engraving here with another video. And this will probably be the final installment um, of this, what I guess is almost turned into a little series. Just waiting and seeing what was going to happen next uh, with the NFL and the Saints. Because, again, just to do a quick recap, it was an NFC Championship game. Uh, season could have, it could have ended within a couple of minutes of the play. But Drew Brees threw to Tommy Lee Lewis or Harris. I always forget his last name. I always forget his last name. And y'all correct me, which I thank you and I love y'all for. Um, but Drew Brees threw the pass. And then uh, Nickel Corey Ro I mean, Nickel Roby Coleman. I'm getting these names mixed up. I'm an old man. Anyway, the Rams cornerback. Roby Coleman, Roby Coleman, there we go. He ran directly into the Saints receiver, ran straight through him, knocked him down, and there was no penalty. It was a clear pass interference. Um, it could have also been a defenseless receiver, helmet to helmet penalty. Um, but it, it should have been called, but it wasn't called. And that completely changed the game. Um, and again, I know, I already know how the comment section is going to look. It's going to be a lot of those people that will be like, oh, well, the Saints still had plenty of chances to win the game. Well, the Saints, they, 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 lost, they went to overtime and they threw an interception. They could have won the game still. That play changed the game. I know it. You know it. Whether you're a Saints fan, you know it. Whether you're a Rams fan, you know it. Whether you're a Vikings fan, you know it. Whether you're pa uh, Panthers, Falcons, Bucks, all, everybody knows it. We all know it. They could have got a first down, ran out the clock, it would have been like 10, 15 seconds left, whatever. Um, but anyway, the, the non-call was just really bad. And again, shout out to the other people, who I know are going to be in the comment section too, talking about, oh, Saints need to get over it. They need to get over it and move on. And again, like I said before, and I'll say it again, <laughs> had that been their team, they would not be saying the same thing. Oh, we know they wouldn't be. They would not be saying the same thing. Um, but anyway, so that happened, and a lot of questions came up about the business side of the NFL. And it's a lot of comment. That, that video is still going off. There's a lot of people still commenting, going back and forth um, about how much of a business the NFL is um, because that call raised a lot of red flags for some people. Now, for me, um, my red flag got raised a couple years back. And when that red flag got raised, did some research, looked at some things, and I was like, oh, man. It broke my heart. It broke my heart. Um, but we can save that for another video. But um, in this case, it, it, did bring a lot of, uh, it did bring a lot of awareness to a lot of people. Um, so they've been talking about it. And, but the, the Saints, with that missed call, uh, what ended up happening was something that I had never seen before. And just to continue that recap, they missed the call. The Rams ended up winning the game in overtime. Um, and Mike, uh, Michael Thomas, the Saints receiver, he tweeted out a section of the NFL rule book. And I was like, okay, I was like, what, what, what section is that? But somebody was kind enough. Um, to also tweet out the section that of the rule book that he put out. And it was basically saying that Roger Goodell has the power to overturn uh, the non-call or overturn the game or uh, bring the players back so they can replay the game or replay the game from the start, uh, from that point. Um, and I was like, wow, I, I never knew that. I never knew that because I've never seen anything like that before. There was a kind of a sort of something... Not even on this level, though. Um, but it was a it was a Browns game. Were they playing the Ravens in that game? I think they might have been playing the Ravens, but whoever the Browns were playing, where a uh, kicker like he either missed the field. I forgot exactly what happened, but it was a long time ago. But they all the players left the field. Um, everybody went back to the locker room and the refs, and they, they made them all come back and finish out the game. They made them replay it from some point, and just I, I forgot the exact scenario. But either way. It's still nothing compared to this um, because this 
they would have had to bring back both teams to run it back. To run it back. You know how when you get, if you get blown out of Madden, some people get a little upset when they get blown out, when they get beat, and they like, hey, run it back. If you're playing one of your boys on a basketball court one-on-one, -on -one, and he ends up hitting a fluky shot, and you're like, oh, man, you went off of that, run it back. And in this case, with the Saints and the Rams, that non-call was just so bad that Michael Thomas tweeted out the part of the rule book. And he tweeted this out at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Well, New Orleans time. Here, uh, it's 3 a.m. But anyway, um, he it was clearly on his mind. So um, that, that happened. And then we were like, man, what's going to happen next? So then a lawyer, Mr... The Robert Robert D'Amico or D'Amico, oh, the names, y'all know my old man, so these names be slipping me. Um, but he said on behalf of the Saints season ticket holders, he was going to sue the NFL and Roger Goodell. He was going to sue him, and he wanted to make this a big deal because it was a big deal. So that happened, and a lot of us were wondering, like, okay, what's the outcome of that going to be? Because, again... Something like this just has not happened before. And the just the, the level that this is on was just insane. It's like, man, like what's what's gonna go down? So we were all wondering, we all like questioning, we all like, man, what what's gonna happen next? So then we waited, we waited, we waited, we waited, we waited. And again, just a quick reminder of how how good of a business and how smart of a business the NFL is. You remember back a couple years ago, I mean, it seems like it's every year, but a couple years ago, Patriots win the Super Bowl. I mean, <laughs> a.k.a. The, uh, the Bill Belichick and Tom Brady Invitational. That's what it should really be called. So Patriots win the Super Bowl, and but, you know, between the, uh, the AFC Championship game and the Super Bowl, it's two weeks. It's two weeks. And NFL, they do have the Pro Bowl in there, but the Pro Bowl, I mean, it makes them some money, obviously, but Pro Bowl ain't, nobody's going to be talking about that for two weeks. So, so two weeks passes between an NFL game, but the NFL is still a business, so that business still needs to be run. So, with the, while the Patriots were waiting to play, I forgot who they were playing in that Super Bowl, a story came out. A story came out. What was that story? It was about Deflate Gate. Oh, the Patriots, they didn't have air in the balls or something like that. They didn't have enough air in the balls. Da, 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 da. So, this story consumed people and it made them continue to talk about the NFL over those two weeks while we're waiting for the, the Super Bowl. So the NFL is still buzzing in people's ears, even though, I mean, because you know, if, if something's in two weeks, you ain't going to be checking them for it every day. You ain't going to be really thinking about it every day. Well, I mean, well, that's, that's, that's your team that's in the Super Bowl, but y y the excitement can kind of die down a little bit or whatnot. But the NFL, they, that story just so happened to drop. And it was deflate gate. So all they were talking about deflate gate, deflate gate, deflate gate. But that kept the NFL fresh in your minds, fresh on the TV, fresh in your heads. And sometimes they say, uh, I forgot how the exact saying goes, is that um, bad press is better than no press. Meaning that if you get in some kind of attention, it's better than not, whether it's good or bad, it's better than not getting any attention at all. And again, the NFL is a business, so the more attention they get, the better. So now we come a couple years later, and look what's going on. Look what's going on. The NFL, the, the, the NFC Championship game finished, and obviously the AFC Championship game too. But now with this call, that it was an obvious call, they missed it. With this call, that's... That's what's been getting a, talked about a lot over these past couple weeks. This week and change. Because it's only a couple days left till Super Bowl. But that missed call has been getting talked about and it's been getting dragged out over these past couple of weeks. Could it be because the NFL needed 
a story to keep themselves relevant. Because the Pro Bowl, again, is the Pro Bowl, but nobody's like focusing on no, oh, who's going to win the Pro Bowl? Is going to be the AFC or the NFC? And no, they, they may do a quick recap of the Pro Bowl for one night, and that's it. There's no preview for the Pro Bowl, and there's only a quick review because it's not even really a game. But this right here, this non-call, the fact that it, it's been buzzing. Anyway, moving on. Um, something that, uh, something to compare this to. Roger Goodell. I know Roger Goodell finally uh, broke his silence about the missed call yesterday um, in a press conference. But, I mean, even though he broke his silence, he, he was better off just remaining silent because he didn't say much of anything. He gave a general, basic, vanilla, run-around answer. And he said, oh, they, uh, he said, um, he said that, uh, I think he mentioned how people feel like technology could have made that better. But he said he feel like technology wouldn't have made it better. And, um, and he, it was just a bunch of garbage. So, you, you know, you know those people who can, sometimes people feel like I do it. But, um, you know those people who can, they can talk a lot without saying anything. That's what Roger Goodell was doing. That's what he did yesterday. Um, but something that I noticed with Roger Goodell was that, and it's a shame because we were, we were all waiting for answers. We were all waiting for answers, waiting to see what he was going to say, waiting to see what he was going to do. Um, but the timing of him actually speaking is very important. It's very important because think about this. Had he spoke as soon as it happened, or the day after, then it's a possibility, not likely, but it's a possibility that a lot more actions could have been taken, a lot more could have went down. We just will never know. But when he finally decides to speak about it three days before the Super Bowl, or four days, because it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so four days before the Super Bowl, I think that speaks volumes. Because, again, he's... Speaking about it last minute. So it ain't like, oh yeah, we're going to make a change to the Super Bowl. We're going to do anything to this. Nah. He's speaking about it when everything is set. Everything is, is just, is, is marked. Everything is good to go with the Super Bowl plans. And nothing's going to happen. Because it ain't like they're going to make all these drastic changes uh, four days before the Super Bowl. They're just not. So... His silence, it, it reminds me, and some of y'all, I mean, it, it sounds funny, but think about it. What are those, those farts? Those farts that, oh, they just, they stink so bad, but you don't even hear them. Some people call them silent killers. And some people call them silent but deadly. And in both of these cases... I mean, whatever you want to call it, both apply to Roger Goodell and the NFL stance on the, the missed call or the non-call, excuse me, because their silence was deadly, because their silence killed the issue. The silence killed any hope that the Saints had of actually getting this situation uh, rectified. That silence was deadly. It deaded the issue. So, I think the timing of him speaking, it was intentional. But then, we actually got a judge that, um, that went ahead and uh, closed, sort of closed the case, so to speak. So, U.S. District Judge Susie Morgan, she ruled today. This was to, and, and, and it's kind of crazy because I didn't, when I first saw this, I didn't see any buzz about it. Going around on Twitter, I didn't see any the I didn't see it getting covered. Well, I didn't really watch NFL Network too much, but I didn't really get, get it, see it getting covered on ESPN or anything like that. Um, and then, of course, I know the um, the Mavericks and of course uh, AD the whole thing going on uh, with basketball right now. Anthony Davis, all them dudes getting traded and whatnot. Um, so that's that's been what the biggest thing on ESPN and all that is. But I have I just haven't seen this being covered too much. So I wasn't even sure if a lot of y'all even knew about it. But anyway, just to verbatim, U.S. District Judge Susie Morgan has ruled in favor of the NFL in the Saints ticket holder lawsuit. 
denied plaintiff's request to return this lawsuit to state court. So, it's, it's done. Uh, and the federal judge also denied their request that she ordered the NFL to replay the end of the game. So, there it is. Um, it's officially been denied. And again, just keep this in your minds. Look at the timing of all of this. Look at when this is all coming out. Roger Goodell first spoke yesterday. This comes out today. So it's just like, uh, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think they, that, that silence, again, silent but deadly. Silent killers, man. So just keep that in mind. Um, now, my guy Smoke, he's a Saints fan. And he was, of course, upset about the issue. I was upset about the issue. I know, man, I just, oh, I, I just, oh, it was bad. It was bad. It was really, really bad. But um, he actually sent me an idea. Send me an email with an idea. So shout out to my guy Smoke, man. He said, uh, team keep it clean. Oh, man, I love your videos. Keep them coming. A few words from an upset Saints fan. All of the nation watched that awful no call happen Sunday night. Terrible way to send the Saints off after all that hard work the team has accomplished. After viewing multiple videos and viewing a few of yours, I got an idea of how the NFL can settle this and make things somewhat right. I thought I would run it past you to see what you think. Since there have been unfortunate events between both games Sunday, or excuse me, since there had, had been unfortunate events between both games Sunday, he's speaking of the, uh, the no call with the pass interference and then with the Chiefs, the, uh, oh gosh, that, that rough in the pass, oh my goodness, that was so embarrassing. Anyway, let me, let me get back to reading this. Uh, he said, since there have been uh, unfortunate events between both games Sunday, since the NFL has already declared Rams versus Patriots, what if the league determined that they have two Super Bowls this year to fix things. So Rams versus Patriots on February 3rd, uh, and then the following weekend, the Saints played the Chiefs. That way, no money is lost from the league. Not that I'm trying to help them make any more money, but they would also profit from it. Seems only right to me. Kind of a stretch, but just spitballing the thought. What do you think? Hope to hear back from you. Um, and he, he thought that he didn't explain himself well. You, you explained it perfectly, though, Smoke. It, it was, like I said, perfect. Um, if they did that, I, I, I could never see the NFL doing that um, because Super Bowl is supposed to be the end-all, be-all. It is supposed to be the granddaddy of them all. It is supposed to be uh, NFL's version of WrestleMania. Funny how WWE and NFL had to throw that in there. Um, it is supposed to be the final show, and that is it. Um, it's supposed to be between the two teams who overcame everything throughout the season in order to be where they are. And that's facing off against each other. It is supposed to be the game that determines who the best in the NFL is. Even though... Uh, these two teams, they got here different ways, especially in their last games, but either way, that game is supposed to be it. The, the Super Bowl is supposed to be the, the last one. Um, but if they did two of them, two Super Bowls, then I just think, yeah, while it will make them money, um, it, I, feel like, I feel like they wouldn't do that. One, because it would uh, water down a lot uh, of the... It will water down the Super Bowl. And then you wouldn't even be able to call it a Super Bowl. Because it would be, have to be called Super Bowls. And, and Super is... You can't use the word Super twice to describe something that's less than the other. And because it would almost be like a pity party. It would almost be like, oh, you know what? Well, we feel bad for, for what we did to you guys. And you know what? Um, Saints, Chiefs, you guys can go ahead and square it off. You, you guys can go ahead and face off and square up and go ahead and do your thing on the field. Um, and y'all can have this after we do our real Super Bowl, our, our number one Super Bowl for the teams that made it here, but not the teams that lost in the playoffs. And because it's like if they did that, then they could. And, uh, it, just, mm, it, just, it just wouldn't work. It will water down the Super Bowls, and it will also water down all the ads and stuff. It would just water down how important those Super Bowl ads and Super Bowl commercials are, because there would then be two. And while that could be more lucrative, I actually think it could be less lucrative, because there, 
these different companies that pay for this ad time and this commercial time for the Super Bowl, now they would, they could be like, instead of going to the highest bidder, they could uh, be like, you know what? We'll just put it on this other Super Bowl. We ain't got to put it on this one because there will be two of them. So I think from a business standpoint, while I understand how it could make money, it could also lose, uh, make the NFL lose a lot of money too. And as we all know, it is a business and the businesses are in it to make money. Um, so I just, I just don't feel like they, they would go for that. And I feel like it would, uh, it would be one of those things where, oh, let's, let's battle for, uh, let's battle for third and fourth place between the Saints and the Chiefs. Or if they did two Super Bowls. And be like, oh yeah, let, let, let's see who, who's really the best, uh, the best third or fourth place team. Or what, which one of us can beat these other guys, even though we both got okie doped in our previous games on some calls. Uh, well, let's see who can, who can last, who can outlast the other team. It just, it just wouldn't, uh, nah. I mean, it's, it, it, again, it sucks how everything went down. It, and it's tough. And again, it's, that's something that, and it, it, oh, it's the worst, man. Like this, to me, this is much worse than last year with the, uh, the Stefan Diggs thing. And we saw the business moves in that one. Like, what's Marcus Williams? He ain't, he's a rookie, but he ain't stupid. Come on now. Y'all saw it. But either way, um, I think this, the, the, the non-call, was much worse than that. The, uh, that was heartbreaking or whatever, but a non-call that completely changes the game... This is a lot worse uh, than that Vikings play last year. Yeah, it's just an ugly situation how uh, this entire thing went down. But this, um, it sucks that there will never be true closure from this entire thing. Um, and it'll be one of those things that you just have to live with. And that's that, man. So anyway, team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for watching. We out. Make sure y'all subscribe to Engraving Biz, man. We turning up. You keep it clean. Hey, Ravens, stop playing with my boy. <laughs>